You're probably already familiar with the story of the invention of the buffalo wing, but have you heard the story of the true inventor of the buffalo wing, an African-American man by the name of John Young? Well, today we're going to talk about it. I'm your host, Country Boy, and this is One Mike Black History. If you like stories like this, you can find more stories like this at onemikehistory.com. I'd like to thank all my subscribers and my members. Without you, none of this can be possible, and I love you all. But without further ado, let's get started. The buffalo wing is an iconic American food that has enjoyed a meteoric rise since its inception in the later half of the 20th century, characterized by its spicy and tangy, often served with celery sticks and blue cheese dressing, it's become a staple of American cuisine. The history, however, is rich and varied and cannot be attributed to a single individual or a moment, but rather a cultural shift and a profound appreciation for casual, flavorful, deep fried food. The allure of buffalo wings can be attributed to a couple of factors, the unique flavor, the versatility, and the communal dining experience they promote. The wings are doused in hot sauce that is both tangy and spicy and appeals to a wide range of palates and has inspired countless variations and adaptations across the globe, from mild to blistering hot to sweet to savory. The adaptability of the buffalo wing caters to an array of taste preferences and fosters its own widespread popularity. Additionally, buffalo wings are celebrated for their versatility. They are favorite choice for various occasions, from casual gatherings to sports bars to home parties to everything in between. The food item effortlessly crosses the boundaries between high-end cuisine and street food with the casual nature of eating buffalo wings often with one hand that makes the dining experience even more engaging and informal. And lastly, another reason for their popularity is the sense of community and camaraderie that it inspires. Typically, they are served in large portions meant for sharing. They encourage communal eating, making them popular choice at sporting events, family gatherings, and social outings. This aspect of sharing togetherness taps into a fundamental human experience. When it comes to the history of Buffalo Wings, it centers around the Anchor Bar, a family-owned restaurant in Buffalo, New York. However, a equally vital but lesser known contributor to the development of the Buffalo Wing comes with an African-American restaurant tour by the name of John Young. Chicken Wings have had its place in both restaurants and home cooking for years. In Buffalo, the oldest establishment to serve chicken wings is the Claridon Hotel. A copy of the hotel's menu dates back to July 1st, 1857 and lists an entire entree of chicken wings fried. In addition to this menu, Cynthia Van Ness, the director of the Library and Archives and Buffalo's History Museum, also found a recipe for chicken wings that dates back to 1894 issue of the Buffalo Commercial Advertiser. But the common narrative around the invention of the Buffalo Wing is with Teresa Belismo, the co-owner of the Anchor Bar in 1964. According to the story, Teresa concocted the dish one night as a late night snack for her son and his friends, finding themselves with an excess of chicken wings as this part of the chicken at the time was largely used either stock or thrown away. She decided to deep fry them and toss them in cayenne pepper hot sauce that she had on hand and serve them alongside celery slices and blue cheese dressing. It was an immediate hit and eventually became a staple at the bar and spread across the United States. But chicken wings were not just an entree in Buffalo, New York. By the 1960s, a Washington, D.C. restaurant named Wings and Things was serving chicken wings in mumbo sauce. The sauce has its roots in Chicago, but has since become very closely related to Washington, D.C. This may have inspired John Young to begin serving his wings in mumbo sauce at his similarly named restaurant, Wings and Things in Buffalo. Young moved to Buffalo from Alabama and began serving breaded chicken wings in his own special mumbo sauce around the mid 60s. His restaurant was called John Young's Wings and Things. And this was around the same time that the Belismo family claimed to have invented buffalo wings. Unlike chicken wings at the Anchor Bar that were covered in a vinegar-based cayenne hot sauce and served without breading, John Young's were different. His version of chicken wings were larger, breaded, and coated in a thick tomato-based sauce. This was Young's own special concoction, and he referred to his wings as mambo wings and served them at his restaurant, Jefferson Avenue in Buffalo, New York. Now, 
it's unclear when exactly Young opened his restaurant in Buffalo. Although he applied for a restaurant license for Wings and Things in 1966, interviews with Young and former customers indicate that he most likely was selling food under that name long before he applied for a license to do so. In any case, Young's restaurant became known for serving breaded whole wings and mambo sauce. Early media coverage around Buffalo Wings predominantly featured Frank and Teresa Belismo. In 1972, the Buffalo Evening News published an article highlighting Buffalo Wings served by the couple, propelling them into the national spotlight. This exposure led to a feature in Associated Press article, a cooking show, appearance, and most notably a 1980 article in The New Yorker by Calvin Trillin. Trillin's piece, however, introduced a counter-argument by John Young, who had challenged the Bellismo's claim to the invention of the Buffalo Wing. Young had relocated to Illinois in 1970. When he came back almost a decade later to Buffalo, he was shocked by the proliferation and marketing of Buffalo Wings. Specifically, he was surprised by the anchor bar claiming to have invented the dish when he believed that Frank Bellismo had been inspired by him. Young said that I was selling 5,000 pounds of chicken wings in 1962 and Mr. Bellismo used to come into my place and eat my wings. Young's assertion of his pioneering role in the Buffalo Wing led to some recognition for him being the inventor of the Buffalo Wing, but the damage was mostly done. By the 1970s, restaurants in Buffalo began to feature their own version of wings, which adhered to the Anchor Bar's recipe of frying the wings, breaking them into drumlets, and tossing them in hot sauce. Commonly, these wings were accompanied by sides, such as blue cheese dressing or celery sticks, but nevertheless, some establishments sought to innovate how they served these wings. Some places would serve them with pizza. By the 1980s, Buffalo-style wings began to permeate restaurant menus outside of Buffalo, New York, marking their ascension to American cuisine. The inception of Buffalo Wild Wings, initially called Buffalo Wild Wings and Rec, in 1982 in Columbus, Ohio, would underscore this expansion. As Buffalo Wings continued to proliferate nationwide, it became increasingly synonymous with American sports culture, especially football and the Super Bowl in particular, solidifying their status as the quintessential game day food. John Young would pass away in 1998, but in 2020, his daughter, Linda Brown Young, began to serve his father's chicken wing recipe on Buffalo Bike Tours, historical wing ride, which honors John Young as the king of wings. There have been some recent efforts to sought to amend this historical oversight by acknowledging Young's contribution. Culinary historians and food writers, along with the Buffalo community, have aimed to ensure that Young's legacy is preserved. This includes coverage and articles and documentaries that highlight Young's innovative role in the significance of Buffalo wings and bringing mumble sauce to the local cuisine. Community leaders and historians in Buffalo have advocated for Young's deserved recognition, emphasizing the varied origins of the Buffalo wings and celebrating the diversity of their contributions. These acknowledgments not only honor young legacy but also enrich the local narrative of the buffalo wing acknowledging the diverse origins and the contributions of african american to the national culinary landscape thank you this has been one mike history i'm your host country boy if you like stories like this you can find more stories like this at one mike history.com i'd like to thank all my subscribers i love you all without you none of this could be possible and peace